Hello everyone and welcome to this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to improve your chest now as it'll help your rating grow significantly. Don't forget to leave a like to this video as well. In this video, I will be taking you through a game played by Ding Liren against his fellow countryman, Wang Hao, the first round of the candidates tournament this year, which sadly has been cancelled. Ding Liren began with c4, Wang Hao replied e5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop c5, and here Ding Liren went for d3. The most common move is of course knight c3, castles, e3, knight c6, followed by knight e2 with the idea of d4. Maybe Ding Liren thought that Wang Hao was well prepared for this and decided to play the rare d3. Wang Hao castled. Ding Liren went for knight c3, c6 with the idea of d5 uh, to get a strong center. Ding Liren played knight f3 and Wang Hao replied with d6. If black plays rook e8 in this position, how can white get an advantage? White after rook e8 would have knight takes e5 with the idea to answer rook takes e5 with d4, so black should take on f2, but after rook takes, king takes f2, rook takes e5, d4, and the rook has to move, rook e8, and e4, white has the center and the bishop pair. Black will of course strike in the center with d5 perhaps, but white uh, should still be better. White's king isn't really that exposed. So Wang Hao played d6, Ding Liren castle, and now rook e8 when knight takes e5 is not possible, of course. Knight a4, bishop b4, a3, bishop a5, b4, expanding on the queen side. However, pawns don't move backwards. Bishop c7, e4, and a5, undermining the b pawn. This is very common to play because uh, white will never take on a5 almost because then black will have a better pawn structure. Bishop b2 was played and knight a6 putting even more pressure on b4. Now white has to decide what white will do about this. Ding Liren went for b5. Wang Hao took on b5. Pawn takes b5 and knight c5, and we got to this structure. After knight takes c5, pawn takes c5. We can see that white has one more pawn in the center, but it's also a backward pawn. However, it's quite difficult to attack the pawn on d3. a4, bishop g4, and now Ding Liren follows the principles of Baron Nimzovich with the move rook a3, the principle of overprotecting. Now, white defends the pawn on d3 with the rook on a3, so white's queen on d1 has more liability. Knight d7 was played. Black wants to execute the maneuver knight d7, f8, e6, and maybe d4 at some point. And here Ding Liren went for a3, a very practical move giving his opponent a lot of choices. Now black can either choose between bishop h5, bishop takes f3, or bishop e6. Bishop e6 is not very tempting to play, because then knight f8, knight e6 is no longer a possibility. Taking on f3 is also not so tempting, because then you give off the bishop pair. So Wang Hao went for the human move bishop h5. Ding Liren played queen b1, getting out of the pin, and planning to go knight d2, knight c4. Wang Hao played b6. And here Ding Liren went through his plan with knight d2, 
Another interesting option for white would have been knight h4, f6, bishop f3. It's quite clear that if black trades of the light squared bishops, black's dark squared bishop will be inferior to white's dark squared bishop, because black has 6 out of 7 pawns on dark squares. And if black retreats with bishop f7, then after knight f5, white has improved their pieces a little. Knight d2 is not a bad move, of course. Knight f8, with the idea of knight e6, knight d4 at some point. Bishop f3, the idea of trading off bishops, light squared bishops. And here, Bang Hao went for queen g5. After bishop g6, uh, please try to find how white can force the trade of light squared bishops. White has the move queen d1 with the idea of bishop h5 practically forcing a trade. Perhaps bishop takes f3 is strongest because after knight takes f3, white's knight has been distracted from the path to c4 and it'll take one more tempi to get to c4 as opposed to the knight being on d2. Queen g5 was played. And here Ding Liren went for h4. Bang Hao has a choice here between taking on d2 or playing queen h6 or queen g6. Bang Hao played queen g6, but perhaps queen takes d2 would have been stronger with the idea that after bishop takes h5, okay, black has given off the bishop there, but now black is able to play knight e6 with the idea of knight d4 at some point. So black has a uh, play too. However, Wang Hao went for queen g6. Ding Liren took on, played queen d1. Taking on h5 is also very possible. Knight takes, bishop takes f3. Queen takes f3. And h5. With this move, Wang Hao places a pawn on a light square which makes sense because his bishop is a dark squared bishop and also glues white's pawns on the king side and dark squares which is not so good for white because they have a dark squared bishop here Ding Liren went for queen f5 and Wang Hao replied with rook a d8 however perhaps queen takes f5 would have been stronger the idea of g6 after pawn takes f5, knight e4, king g7, f6, king e g8. And it seems very hard to make progress in this position. And it'll probably end in a draw. However, perhaps Wang Hao thought of the rule that usually you don't want to take your opponent's pieces when you have this option and you want him to take your pieces instead because then your pieces get improved. This is true in most cases but uh, the beautiful thing about chess is that it has very many examples where rules are not followed and you have to think yourself. Queen takes g6, knight takes g6, king g2 According to Kramnik, it's always an improvement to your position to play g3, followed by king g2. This is of course true when you're not being attacked. Let's say against the king's Indian, you shouldn't play g3, king g2. f6, knight c4, king f7, bishop c1, rook d7. It's clear that white is better. But it's not very easy to make progress as white. In fact, Ding Liren lost his patience a little with the move f4. And suddenly, black is able to get a very strong position after pawn takes f4. Taking on f4 with the pawn is not possible, as the knight takes h4 will be played. So bishop takes f4. And here, Ding Liren has a choice between taking with the knight or with the bishop on f4. In the game, he went for knight takes f4, as after bishop takes f4, pawn takes f4, 
rook d4, knight takes b6, f5, black has given up a pawn. However, black gets very serious play and this was a very big alternative as well. But in one of his video lectures, Mark Dvoretsky talked about the book, The Seven Sins of Chess. And one of the sins was materialism, not wanting to give up material. Knight takes f4 was played, pawn takes f4, f5, e5. On the surface, it might look as if white has an okay position, with a passed pawn, better knight against the bishop. However, Black has a very nice blockade square on e6, and the white has many weak pawns. Rook e6, a pretty smart move, using the g-file. King f3, rook g6, knight e3, king e6. The king is usually a pretty good blockading piece. Not as good as the knight, which from e6 would also have put pressure on f4 and maybe gone to d4, but still a decent blockading piece, defending the pawn on f5, as well as blockading the e-pawn. Rook d1 was played. Bishop d8, putting pressure on the h4 pawn. Now it suddenly becomes clear how white's pawns are quite weak. Rook a2. And rook d4 was played in the game. Bishop takes h4 is also possible, but it becomes quite sharp after rook h2. Rook g3, king e2, g5, knight c4, rook d4, putting pressure on the f4 pawn. But white also has some counterplay as white threatens to take on b6, though black's counterplay should be bigger than white's, but uh, it seems as if Wang Hao didn't want to allow any counterplay. He went for rook d4, knight c2, rook d5, knight e3, and rook d7. And suddenly, out of the blue, white has a brilliant resource to save the game. If you want to, you can stop the video and try to find the move which allows white to get a draw in this position immediately. Alright, it's d4. Very anti-intuitional move. Make, making black able to take on d4, but it turns out that after rook takes d4, rook takes d4, pawn takes d4, knight c2, king d5, white has the resource which is not so easy to see from far away. Knight takes d4, with the idea that after king takes d4, white will have rook d2, and then collect the bishop, on d8, it's still a very complicated struggle, but now white isn't worse. However, Ding Liren defended passively with rook dd2. We may say that this is perhaps the fatal mistake, because black simply took a pawn on h4. That's the Turned out that black had a genius move, rook g4. I'm sure Petrosian would have been very proud of this exchange sacrifice. It turns out that white can't really take on g4, as after pawn takes g4, king e3, rook d4. White is helpless against black idea, uh, black's idea of g5. Ding Liren tried rook h2, but after g6, knight takes g4, pawn takes g4, king e3, bishop e7, rook c2, h4. Ding Liren resigned, because black's pawns are just going to queen. Alright everyone, thank you for watching this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.